Well, it finally happened. I pushed the edger so hard, I split the saw blade in half. No, I'm just kidding. These are made this way. They're called split blades. I'm gonna show you why they're made this way and how I use them. So welcome back guys. It's a nice morning here. I'm getting set up to saw and before I start sawing for the day, it's time for me to change my edger blades. It's actually overdue to change my edger blades. I've been pushing them a little too far here. So I got these resharps ready to go and I just thought it'd be interesting to show you guys, give you a little bit of information if you're not familiar with this. These are called split blades. So it's just like a regular saw blade, not much different than what you'd have on your home table saw, except they're made in two pieces. And I'm going to show you in a minute why they're made in two pieces, the huge advantage of that. But I just thought I'd talk about the, the blade a second in general. Um, much fewer teeth than on your home table saw. And the reason for that is it allows you to cut faster. I know for a lot of people that's counterintuitive. Most people think, boy, more teeth seems to mean you would cut faster, but that's not necessarily true. Actually, the way saws work is the less teeth on a blade, the more each tooth is taking, the more aggressive you can cut. So I know that's always seems counterintuitive to people, but that's just the way, way it works. And then they have these I call them wipers. I'm sure there's a more technical term for the carbide in here. Uh, that's just to keep it from binding, uh, keep the, the kerf clean. So, so why do we use these split blades on the edger? Well, I'm going to take you in here. I got my light set up. So you can see this is a two blade edger. This is a Baker edger. I'm not going to get too in detail about the edger because I have other videos about it. That talk about it more in depth. It's a great machine. I love it. One of the main reasons, well, I'm not going to say it's one of the main reasons, but one of the benefits of this Baker, uh, why I chose it over some other brands, is the split blades. So if you look at the way this is constructed, this here is a fixed blade. So this stays in place. This blade slides back and forth to adjust for the width you're cutting. And they both run on this big shaft here. And on the other side, of the bulkhead there, there's a bearing, and there's a bearing on this side, and, well, it shouldn't take too long for you to figure out there's only one of two ways to take this blade off. A, use split blades so they can just come apart and come off the shaft, or you have to take apart the whole machine and slide the blades off. A real pain. This way is much easier, as you're about to see. So, that was a big selling point to me. As far as I know, the last I knew, it's been a couple years since I did any research on edgers, Woodmiser uses a single piece blade. So you have to slide the blades off the end of the shaft. That to me is not, not an acceptable way to build it when you have, you know, it, it's so simple to use these, these split blades. So it is really nice. It makes changing them simple, easy. It's not a job to dread. Uh, this whole machine in general is, is pretty user friendly. So I'm going to get set up here and I'll kind of give you a bird's eye view of exactly how this goes. All right. You guys probably actually have a better view than I do because I'm kind of working blind on the other side of the machine here. But um, this is a tip that I highly recommend that the first time I ever changed these, I did not do. Take a little pick and clean these out first because these are like allen bolts and they're recessed in there and the little fine sawdust packs into them and you'd be surprised how easy it is to strip one of these out if you don't get a full solid bite with your allen wrench i'm actually using a socket yeah and you can ask me how i learned that um let me think no wait um, yeah, I got that right. I don't know if I might have to put a block in here to 
hold that. Yep. Let me go get a block. So there's just four of these Allen bolts that hold the whole thing together. And you can see how they just pop out of there. Finished taking out my last bolt here all the way. Simple as that. You see how easy that was. It took what two, three minutes. And I probably could have done it faster if I wasn't on camera. So that just runs on that arbor there. And obviously the next two are just going to drop right in and bolt it back up. So I'm going to get these swapped out. Hopefully that, you know, gave you some, a quick easy lesson on how they work. Really, I mean, it's dead simple. And maybe we'll talk about a few other things here while I'm at it. All right, nothing to it. A few other tips I'll give you guys. Anti-seize on everything. It'll just make your life easier. It's amazing how tight this stuff gets from getting hot and cold and sitting in here. So anti-seize everything. If one of them socket head bolts starts wallowing out a little bit, you want to have some extras on hand. Don't put that back in or you're going to hate your life the next time you have to change. Um, one thing I have to do yet, I always like to keep this shaft lubed up that's just silicone because it just makes this slide easier it's amazing when you let this sit for a while it starts to get a little bit of surface rust on that shaft it really gets stiff to move that movable blade back and forth so that helps um, in the meantime I pulled off the covers I'm gonna grease this up uh, maybe I'll show you that for anybody that's interested in one of these machines all the grease fittings are pretty easily accessible. There's a cover on this side, cover on that side. I think it's three bolts on this side, two on the other. So it's real easy to take the covers off. So I'm going to get greased up, uh, blow out the air filter, just do some general maintenance. I wanted to show you the blades that came out of here. I actually did lose two tips. And my sharpener can actually re-tip these. I'll have to see if it's cost effective to have them re-tipped or just re replace it. I actually, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm actually toying with the idea of getting a little bit less aggressive blades. Um, I do a lot of kiln dried lumber through here and it takes it no problem, but it really chews at that kiln dried lumber and you I end up with a bunch of tear out and stuff like that. So I was actually thinking about maybe adding some more teeth for a finer finish. I basically use it for molder blanks, so it ends up going through a planer anyway. But um, I don't need quite as, as aggressive a cut, and it might save those tips a little bit more. This is kind of my thoughts. So that, that might be something I look into on my next set. So I have two sets, and I just swap them back and forth, so these will go to the sharpener now. I know somebody will probably ask how long do they last. Um, it's a cop out, but it depends. I honestly don't know. Uh, being that I run a mix of green lumber and kiln dried lumber, I've never really kept track of it. They last pretty long. Uh, basically, I just know when they're getting dull. I, I can tell the motor loads up more. It puts more of a load on it, and I, I can just tell they're they're starting to get dull and not cut real efficient and that's when I switch them so I don't have a set number of feet it's very difficult to say being that I'm running softwoods hardwoods kiln dried green it's hard to say they're gonna last X number of feet I just go by when I think they need to be resharpened I pull them 
But overall, I mean, they're carbide tips, so they, they have a pretty decent lifespan. So I have one question for you guys, actually. I know it's rare. I'm usually the one uh, talking on here. But uh, does anybody know the best way to fix a ripped conveyor belt? This is starting to go on me. And I'm not really familiar with belts like this. I've seen some stuff online. It looks like a lot of the stuff you need, like special tools and it's a whole setup. Um, I'm just wondering if there's some kind of quick patch thing I can put on this to keep it from tearing apart completely or if anybody knows any solutions for me. So it's just the, the belting on my return conveyor here. One of them is starting to split at the seams. So if anybody knows anything, um, if you want to share that with me, I'd appreciate it. Other than that, I'm going to get this uh, cleaned up, greased, and I got some nice cherry logs to saw. So that's what I'm working on today. I'll catch you guys later.